Hi, Isai Nursery School. Good morning. I'm so happy to be with you today. I hope you're ready for group because I'm ready for group. Do you think you can get ready, get comfortable, and we can sing our song together? You ready? Let's shake our shoulders and let's shake our heads. Let's shake our hands and let's sing. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little tap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them, up past chin and cheeks. Cover up those great big eyes and give a little peek. There we go. Hi, everybody. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the special day we're going to have on Sunday. I know Karen talked a little bit about it in her videos. It's going to be Mother's Day. And that's a day where we celebrate moms and how much we love our moms and our grandmas and our aunties. And we celebrate how well they love us and take care of us. And we show them how much we appreciate that. We like to thank them for that. And so I know Karen showed you how to make very special Mother's Day crowns and also how to make some paper flowers and a vase to give to mom. And today we're going to make something else that you can give to your mom. It's not for you to keep. This is to give as a gift because when we give presents, it really shows people that we care about them and it makes us feel good too to give a present. So that's what we're going to do today. But first, I wanted to talk to you about the kinds of gifts people sometimes give moms on Mother's Day. I was thinking that a really popular present that moms get on Mother's Day are flowers. And I was thinking, why do people like to get flowers as presents so much or give flowers as presents? What do you think? Why do you think people like to have flowers? Hmm, maybe it's because they smell beautiful. Some flowers smell really good. I was thinking though that it's also probably because of all of the beautiful colors. Flowers come in so many bright, beautiful colors and we can see a lot of them outside, can't we? And flowers have a lot of bright, beautiful colors because they have pigments. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of weeks ago, I did a video where we did a chromatography experiment. Do you remember that big science word, chromatography? And we took colors from a black marker, we colored a black marker, and we put it in water, and it helped separate all of the colors that were in that black marker. The different colors are called pigments. Pigments are in markers, but they're also in flowers too. That's how flowers get their color. So today, we are going to take the pigments out of the flower petals and make them into art. So I went around, I'm gonna show you, and I collected some flower petals from around my neighborhood and my yard. And also I had some old tulips dying on my table. So I took the petals, I've got some tulip petals, I've got some yellow dandelions. This is a red tulip petal. I have bits of grass. What else do I have in here? Oh, this is a pretty pink flower. I think I have, oh yes, purple. I have purple violets. And we're gonna do an experiment to try to get these out. The things that you're gonna need are something to put the flowers on that they won't really stick to. Um, like I'm gonna use aluminum foil. And another thing that you're gonna need is a piece of paper, um, or you could do this on the coffee filters that Karen put in the special packages that your parents picked up. You could do it on construction paper, paper towels, whatever you've got, anything. It's probably better though, if it's white, so that you can really see the colors as we get them out of the pigments. It's gonna be kind of fun. We're gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna move the phone so that you can see my work, okay? Let's see, all right. Here's my paper. I'm gonna put it down near the aluminum foil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my flowers and grass and I'm gonna make them into a design. Maybe right here, 
I'll do a pattern. Maybe I'll make my first part of it a pattern. I'm gonna do yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. What would come next in the pattern? Yellow, green, yellow, green. Yeah, I think over here, I wanna put some purple and red. Maybe I'll try to make these into a little circle. And I'm gonna put all different colors. So I've got a yellow tulip here. I'm gonna make a circle. Let's see, I'm putting all of these flowers and pieces of grass face up because I'm gonna put my uh, paper on top of it and I want it to go on the paper. I've got some pink petals here. Hmm, I think I'm gonna put another red one right here. Let's see. I think I want to put another dandelion right there. There we go. What else can I put? Oh, I've got all kinds of things. I'm gonna sprinkle some more purple, maybe some more grass over here. I'm just putting it to be about the size of my paper. I really like the purple flower, so I'm gonna put purple on the other side of my pattern that I made. Purple. I'm gonna try this pink flower. Let's put that right here. Now, once I have my design, how I like it, I'm gonna take my piece of paper and put it right over my design and cover it up. And now this is the fun part. We have to smush the flowers. I've got a big rolling pin and I'm gonna use that. Maybe your mom or dad or grandparents have a rolling pin you could use. But if you don't have a rolling pin, I have here, this is, you know, from our mortar and pestle that we used to crush up different grains. I have one of those you can push on. Maybe you have a monster truck and you could take your monster truck with its big monster wheels and roll it back and forth. But the important thing is you have to roll and really press. I'm gonna hold the paper steady and press down. I can kind of hear the flowers crunching a little bit. And you have to press hard and do it a lot of times. So roll back and forth. I might roll over one spot a lot before I move to the next spot. If you have wooden blocks at your house, you could use the blocks to tap I'll show you what it looks like. I might tap and press like this. Could you tap with a block? Could you roll with one of your trucks? But you have to really press hard. You could have a grown up help you press too. Let's press a few more times. Let's count. I'm going to roll five more times. Let's count together. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five. And I'm really pressing hard. I don't know if you can see, but there's little marks soaking through the paper. Let's lift it and look and see if it's how I like it yet. I might have to put it back down to get more color. I'm gonna peel it up slowly. Oh, some of my flowers stuck but you can see my paper. What do you notice about this paper? What colors came out the best? I see a lot of yellow and green and some of the purple. There's a tiny bit of pink right at the edge and red. I think I wanna put a little bit more pink and red. Look at everything stuck there. I'm gonna pick up my red because I kind of want it right in the middle. I'm gonna fold it up and I'm gonna roll again to see if I can get more red. Maybe I'll put it here. And I have a couple more flowers I'll add to add more color in different spots. Let's see what happens. I'll put that right down on the red and I'm gonna really press where the red is. I can tap, tap with my little wooden tool. You could tap with a wooden block. You could roll with a rolling pin or roll with a truck. 
maybe you have a plastic animal that you could say, or a big Lego or Duplo. Let's see. I could rub it. Let's see if the red came out. A little bit, a little bit, and you can try. And we have this beautiful paper of flower art where we got the pigments out of the flowers. We squeezed them out and yours might look different. I can see my pattern. Yellow, green, yellow, green. There it is. Let's see, I'm gonna move the phone again. Okay, now I wanted to read you a book that is about a mom and how much she loves her child. And it's called, I Love You, Stinky Face. It's kind of a silly title, isn't it? I Love You, Stinky Face. This is written by Lisa McCourt and it's illustrated by Sid Moore. And as you're listening to the book, try and think about what kind of book this is. Do you think it's a true story? Do you think it's nonfiction? Or do you think it's fiction? Is it a made up story? Okay, I'm gonna get nice and close. I love you, stinky face. I love you, my wonderful child, said Mama as she tucked me in. But I had a question. Mama, what if I were a big scary ape? Would you still love me then? If you were a big scary ape, I would comb your whole hairy self to make sure you didn't have any tangles. And I would make you a birthday cake out of bananas. And I would tell you, I love you, my big scary ape. But mama, but mama, what if I were a super smelly skunk and I smelled so bad that my name was Stinky Face? And then I would give you a bath and sprinkle you with sweet smelling powder. And if you still smelled bad, I wouldn't mind. I would hug you tight and whisper in your ear, I love you, Stinky Face. But mama, but mama, what if I were an alligator with big sharp teeth that could bite your head off? And then I would buy you a bigger toothbrush for your big teeth and make sure you brush them every night so they stayed healthy and strong. And if you had a sore throat, I would stick my head right inside your enormous jaws to make sure you were okay. And I would say, I love you, my ferocious alligator. But mama, what if I were a terrible meat-eating dinosaur with razor-sharp claws that ripped my sheets to shreds every night while I slept? Then I would give you plenty of meat to eat if that is what you liked. And I would sew your sheets back together every day because after all, ripping them would be an accident. And I would tuck you into your newly mended sheets every night and say, I love you, my sweet, terrible dinosaur. But mama, but mama, what if I were a swamp creature with slimy, smelly seaweed hanging from my body and I couldn't ever leave the swamp or I would die? Then I would build a house right next to the swamp and I would stay with you and take care of you always. And when you splashed to the surface, I would say, I love you, my slimy little swamp monster. But mama, but mama, what if I were a green alien from Mars and I ate bugs instead of peanut butter? Then I would dress you in colors that showed off your nice green skin. And I would pack your lunchbox with beetles and spiders and ants and grasshoppers and the tastiest bugs you ever had. And I would pack a note with all the bugs that said, I love you, little greenie, bon appetit all the bugs in that sandwich. But mama, but mama, what if I were a cyclops and I had just one gigantic eye in the middle of my head? Then I would look into your eye, into your gigantic eye and say, I love you, my little cyclops. And I would sing you a lullaby until your one gigantic eyelid got droopier and droopier and it finally closed and you fell fast asleep. I love you, Mama. 
and I love you, my wonderful child. I hope you liked that book. What do you think? Was this a fiction book? Was it made up? Or do you think it was a true story? I think it's a fiction book. That's what I think. I hope you liked reading it. And I hoped you liked making the flower art, getting the pigments out of the flowers and making your own art. I would love to see pictures of your creations. And I hope that you give them as a present to a mom or a grandma or an auntie. It will make you feel really good to give them as a present, okay? I hope I see you soon. I miss you all. Goodbye.